Down the back stretch, Dixon and Weldon can only watch in awe and amazement as here he comes for the white flag. One white to flag. go for Dario Franchini and a smiling Ashley Judd. This one, when he crosses the line, will be his third win of the season. The first time he's won more than two races in a single season. Here he comes out of four. Your race winner, Dario Franchini. Will Power's going to use that push to pass if he's going to do anything about Alex Pelot. They begin their final 2.38 miles here at Barber Motorsports Park. And Alex Pelot has done a mighty job to sustain this pressure while dealing with looking at traffic up ahead in the form of Connor Daly, the last car on the lead lap. Meanwhile, looking in his mirrors and seeing an ever-present willpower. He's Con had to manage tires. He's had to manage strategy. He's had to match and meet the anticipation and the expectation of Chip Ganassi signing him to this incredible ride in the 10 car. A flawless job so far. He's a few corners away from wrapping this up, but Connor Daly is going to have a complete another lap to attack Ed Jones. This guy, the 24-year-old Spaniard, who out of the car is just, has such a lovely demeanor. He's such a pleasant young man behind the wheel. He is an animal. It's time for the motor racing world to say hello, Palo. Alex Palo wins his maiden IndyCar race. That's a flag, baby. You're an Indy winner. Park. Awesome, man. Great, great job, everybody. White flag is out. Jimmy's got this race in hand right now. Vassar, Andretti. Down through turn, one and two, exiting two. That's Oriol Serbia on the lapped Vistion card in third place, then Patrick Carpentier third on the timesheets, but he is not in it. It's Vassar and Andretti with less than a mile to go. Jimmy Vassar timed it perfectly, it would appear, holding the low line, drifting out to the wall. He will the become the first two-time winner of the 500, presented by Toyota. With six races left on this schedule and plenty of ovals, Polo has still more opportunities to get that first oval win because it's going to be hard here with one more lap left to go for Will Power and Team Penske to continue the Penske dominance of Iowa Speedway. It may not be the king of corn country, his teammate Joseph Newgarden or Scotty Mack who won last night, but the 43-year-old Australian is about to get win number 43. Will Power victorious for the first time at Iowa Speedway from 22nd on the grid, and Stingray Rob is upside down. Massive oh. crash at the end of this race. Rossi, Ed Carpenter, and Kyle Kirkwood. Well, Elio, he said, you know, he absolutely loves this racetrack, but he also said it with kind of a sigh of just how intense this racetrack can be and just exhaustion, but, you know, getting the satisfaction of doing what he's doing right now, that's just gives you the love of, of the challenge of this high bank place. We're on the last lap of the race. Down the back stretch. Still no closing in by Ryan Briscoe. Ain't gonna happen. Elio Castro Nevis comes off of corner number four, heads for the checkered flag. And Elio Castro Nevis wins at Texas, his 16th career win. White flag. Now one we're going to see. Go. got a slow car ahead. Nice and smooth now. One more to go. Tony Sicali, Paul's engineer. Great engineer, great coach as well. We could go. Tracy dropped all the way back to 22nd, came roaring up to the field, took the win. Similar performance at Long Beach from 17th, qualified position to the lead. This time he started on the outside of the front row. The pass actually. Frankiti's problem, less than Tracy's pass. Working the final lap. What a great finish it would be for these two drivers. Very close friends to the late Greg Moore. For Canadian Paul Tracy to win here in Vancouver would mean just a huge, huge amount to the Moore family.
I would imagine it'd be a very emotional celebration. Michael Andretti has fallen off the pace and has begun falling back through the order as we continue to watch the lead. So far, they've been pretty well behaved. Checkered flags in the hands. Oh, King again. And Paul, Great job. Beautiful. Paul Tracy has taken the win. One lap to go. If Dario Franchini has any Nashville magic, now is the time to unleash it. Unfortunately for Sam, he's got lap traffic in front. Looks like Ed Carpenter just in front of him. Now what Ed needs to do is to move over because he's not running for position right now and not affect the outcome. Coming around turn number four. Gearbox is almost completely shuffled. Made it to the end, boys. Good job at the pit stop. The day. pride of Defiance, Ohio, Sam Hornis Jr. has picked up the victory. His second win of the season. His first coming at Phoenix, 14th win of his career. And that moves him into a tie for second in points. One to go. Bring on, Mike. One to go now. Tony Kanaan. If Hornish is going to make a move, it will have to be at the end of this long back stretch. Watch for him to slice underneath and he moves to the high to side, on. drops Hardy, back in. Hardy, inside, now Hornish is going to try down to the inside. Watch some blocking going on by Tony Kanan. And Tony Kanan keeps him back, finishes ahead of Hornish, Castro Nevis, and Manning. There's the leader. Now Mira closes up on Tony Kanan. On the final lap at Texas. Onto the back stretch. It's going to be a win for Elio Castroneves unless these two guys make something happen here. Kanan and Weldon go side by side. Elio Castroneves makes the turn for the line. And there it is. Penske wins at the start of the season and at the end. White flag will come out to Scott Dixon, the rookie, trying to score a win on an oval. Let's see if he can do it. Kenny Breck is right there, traffic just ahead. He's just got to negotiate this traffic. Kenny Breck drops back a little bit. Kenny Breck moves to the inside. Now takes the sweep to the outside. Doesn't look like it's going to happen for Breck, but it will happen. For Scott Dixon, the rookie becomes the 46th driver to win in car. Good job, Bill. Beautiful. He scores his win in his third start. Look at how slowly. You run the same risk, as slow as they're going right now. Same thing. Don't jump on that power. Believe me, they've got their foot on the brake right now, one on the gas, trying to hold it down there and spool it up. You saw Zanardi's on yeah. the outside get a little twitch. Here we go. By going now, they see the green isn't out yet, so they cannot pass it, even if they have nope. a run on him. So by going early, he's out, able to build ahead of Steven. The starter still hasn't just played the green flag. Now the green is out. Let's oh, see if any of them tie that. Vassar's making a bid. Vassar takes the lead. Green on the right side. Zanardi almost touches wheels with more. The two target teammates are first and second. And you saw Zanardi had to lift off a little bit when he went into one, held up more a little bit, gave that Jimmy that little break. That might be enough. Here comes, Here comes more. more. Here comes more. Zanardi low, more up high. And this is helping Jimmy Vassar get away. No, he's got to battle. The Vassar's out in front by about five car lengths. They come off the turn now. Can he hold on? Can he hold on for a million dollars? Yes, Jimmy Vassar with his fifth in the air wins one million dollars at the 500. One million five at the flag. That was for second in the championship. One million five for Jimmy Vassar. White flag, white flag. Two miles to go. Oh, off the gas, the car's not working well for him, but Sam's got slowed up just a little bit in the high side there. Clear, clear, clear. Dixon has a little better momentum coming off the corner. Sharp comes up high. Dixon sees the opportunity come down low. But it looks like it's all Hornet. Sam Hornet. Sam Hornish has won three of the last four races and will now trail the points leaders by a mere 19 points. Meanwhile, more. 
Just 22 years old, looking for his first career win. Final lap, Moore leads Andretti. Two corners remain for Michael to try to close up on Moore. Only 22 starts in Moore's resume. Could this be the day for Greg Moore and the players team from Canada? I don't think Michael has enough time. Look there, Moore look thinks there. he has it won with his fist in the air. He takes the checkered flag and resets the record as youngest winner of a PPG Cart World Series event. White flag for Colton Herta. Under two miles to go to get back to victory lane for the first time in more than two years. Last great passing opportunity is here. Kirkwood not close enough to challenge. Is anyone else a little further back? Not up front. VK and Grosjean might mix it up back there for eight. Yeah, VK got around Roman Grosjean, I believe, down in turn one. But Colton Herta doing everything white right all three days of the weekend. Michael Andretti won here seven times more than anyone else has won once as a car owner has not had a win this entire season they've been quick especially on street races today in toronto and this weekend they put it all together colton herda dominates the weekend leads every session for the first time in indycar history and herda has won for the first time in over two years james hinchcliffe now tries to Pull out of the draft and just hassle, just annoy, just pressure to Kumasato. But oh, Newgarden goes go. to the inside. Joseph Newgarden to the inside. It was three wide at one point. And it could be three wide coming to turn one. He moves up into second place. The white flag out one to go. Hinchcliffe responds. Hinch comes back to second. Wow, Sato maintains his lead. Hinchcliffe, Newgarden and Marco Andretti vying for his first podium of the year. This has been brilliant. These final 22 to 20 laps have been spectacular. Marco Andretti pops on Newgarden now on the outside. Oh, he got Easily him. Easily done. That was an easy one. He used his push to pass. So Hinchcliffe has one left. Newgarden has one left. That's of the top four guys. And in the background is looming Oriol Serbia. This is far from done. And remember, the last person to get their first and second wins back to back was AJ Armendinger back in 2006. Is Sato going to repeat history or is this going to be Hitchcliffe's second win? It's all to play for on this final lap. And, and everybody's, on it. everybody's burning their button. Hitch is on the button. He's got oh, the inside. Sato says no again. Chops him again. Hinchcliffe, did he do it early enough for Hinch to have a run? New Gardens out of the draft. Sato hands on to it. New Garden on the inside of Andretti. And on the inside, Hinchcliffe oh. is on the over and under. Oh, he is in the mayor's office. James Hinchcliffe runs it to the line. Will he have enough? And he wins his second one. Serbia the fourth. On the final corner, on the final lap, James Hinchcliffe is a winner again. Well, I've never seen them so equally matched. The first seven now running all right at 103 miles an hour as the white flag indicating one more lap to go comes out for that group first through sixth fernandez sits in sixth gordon at the front of the order remember, second third fourth going through fifth and sixth are full out and fernandez just behind remember two hours ago when this race started gordon starting from the pole beginning to fall back to be picked off by one car after another how he has now dialed the setup in at just the right moment. Now he's the fastest. If they can, where will they make their move? Vester trying to hold off Bruin. Michael Andretti sitting there waiting, looking for his opening again. Comes a little bit offline. Robbie Gordon making the final set of turns now. And Scott Pruitt climbing right on the back end of Vassar. Michael Andretti closing on Pruitt. If the pressure doesn't get to him, they just won't make any mistakes. A final shot down Sunset. Oh, Michael sliding out. Here he comes. No looking, no. Again, he took a look. Decided on the same line in through the corner. Here comes Robbie Gordon. Checkered flag lies just ahead. Will anybody else make a move? They make that final bend. And the checkered flag for Robbie Gordon. Vassar is second. Pruitt is third. Michael Andretti is fourth. Brian Herta trying to hold off two-time PPG Cup champion Alex Zanardi. They face the white flag this time by. 
Brian Hurd is stretching it out a little bit here. A 113-3 to a 113-6. Hurd over Zanardi. Now, what he's got to pay attention here, do not make a mistake. And in those spots where I can possibly get past, I am not going to leave that door open for Alex Zanardi. It has been such a tough year for Brian Herta. He has been to the brink of this first victory so many times. And on the radio to Herta, the instruction, don't look back. He's pulling away a little bit. Gary, he's doing everything right here. He's making all the right moves. He's putting in great laps. He's a got slight a little gap. bit of a gap. Sorry, Bob. Top of the hill, Zanardi drops back slightly. Is he planning something? Or does he just have nothing up his sleeve for Brian Herta? They've got one critical outbreaking spot right down here. Brian has got to make sure he keeps that door closed for Alex Zanardi. Here it he comes. goes to the inside. Turn 11. Alex, he counters him perfect. Zanardi on the power off the corner. Squirming under acceleration to try to catch Brian Herta, but he will not be able to. First career win for Brian Herta and well earned. If a yellow comes out now, we can't red flag it. White flag, amigo. White flag. White flag, amigo. Here there, it comes. There has never been a Mexican driver win the Indianapolis 500. Maybe that time is now. With one more lap to go, Pato clear. goes to the lead. He's Let's not going to lift this time. He did it against Erickson and lost part Two of back. the award to the front off of turn two. Five back. Six back. Oh, Ward tries to break the draft. New Gardens, like I've been in this situation before. Joseph Newgarden around the outside of Pedro Award. This is mind blowing. Joseph Newgarden had to wait 12 times to win it, and now he's going to do it back to back. Joseph Newgarden is a two time Indy 500 winner. Oh, my goodness. Let's go. Let's go. White flag, one lap to go here at Denver. Brenna Shakira doing just about everything he can in his bid for a championship in his third year in the champ cars. This is race number 15, four more races to go, 23 championship points available in three of those, the exception being the 500 miler on the super speedway at Fontana, California, when only one round of qualifying means just one championship point in qualifying or 22 on the weekend. Scott says they're in cruise mode, but they're actually still clicking off the quickest laps in the field. As things stand, Adrian Fernandez and Alex Tagliani will be eliminated mathematically from championship contention, and that will mean there are six still alive for the Vanderbilt Cup, which embodies the championship, and the Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. But this day is all about Newman Haas Racing. 350th start, 11th 1-2 finish for the team in its glorious history. 73rd victory for the squad. Good job, Bruno. Good job. And second of the year for Bruno. You know, when you talk to people, they talk about not getting the results we deserve or not getting the results that show how we're running. And you hear that from people, and, and you understand it. But the end result is the result. And today they're posting the result to show everybody else that they are back on track and performing the way that they expected to in this season start. Last lap, and the team the baby home. and the team really believes in the driver. Last lap just is not close enough. And the neat thing for Graham Rahal, because he has had some problems earlier this year, we get to do this again tomorrow, guys. Power on his last push to pass there. Ray Hall with a good run. Still got one left. He's got one more long stretch. That's Down we... along the strand toward turn seven will be the last really strong passing opportunity for Ray Hall if he can stay close. You no, know, and Power was putting up over the curves. You can see how hard he's driving it right now. He can feel them. Doesn't even need to look in the mirrors, but Graham need to be just a little bit closer coming through turn six. Two great drives for both of them. Different motivation, but two astonishing drives. And you know how hard we're working in the car right now just to finish these laps. Your heart's racing, your hands are sore, your this arms are sore. This is the closest sore. he's been. This is the closest he's been to him since this last stint started. 
He's going to have to find a way to really stuff it inside in this last couple of corners if he's going to have a way to go. There's his last push to pass. Oh, oh, and slide comes sideways. out sideways. Checker flag is in the air to the finish line with his second win of the season comes Will Power for Team Penske. Good job, boys. Now it's going to be decision time. White flag comes out for Michael Andretti. One to go. And Michael Andretti gets around Little Al. Castro Nevis does too. Al lets all three of them pass. Top three are still in contact onto the back stretch. Michael Andretti could well be on his way to a win. One more corner and it doesn't look like Castro Nevis is going to have what it takes. There is still some traffic ahead. They come off of the corner. Michael Andretti roars toward the finish line. And Michael Andretti takes his 38th victory. It's been 24 races since Michael's last win. Adrian Fernandez is now being told with the white flag that there is a single lap between him and victory. Kenny Brack recognizes the white flag, one to go. that there is a single lap between him and his potential first victory. Things have happened so out of the ordinary at Surfers. Remember, it wasn't too long ago that we saw two white flags at Surfers Paradise. Hopefully, this will be the one and only. Oh, don't even, don't even, <laughs> don't go there. Sorry. Brack is closing in. Ah, uh, there's no way at this point, I think, Paul. I mean, Kenny has driven just fantastically all weekend long. You can see Fernandez checking his left mirror, though. There is some concern there. But he's got to be closer than this, and then he's got to be able to pull off the pass. A little defensive driving here goes a long ways. I think Masters also safe in his position. Yeah, Another nope. fine run by Carpentier at this point. Now looking at the back of D'Amato. No contest there, Vassar, Damata, Carpentier, Castro, Nevis. Here is where the fight's going to be, and time and distance is running out. Already, Jim Swindell, the starter, has picked up the checkered flag. Kenny Breck is right there, but he's running out of opportunity. This will be the fourth podium of the year for the rookie champion. And if he's going to stick it, he's got to put it in right here, Paul. Coming into the final corner, turn 12. He's just got to dive bomb him, but he's not going to do it. Adrian Fernandez makes the turn. Pit straight lies ahead. Twin checkered flags. And now we can say he's done it. I was afraid to mention it until that car was definitely <laughs> over the line with the day we've had here. Yeah, lay out of it for a couple of seconds. You can get right back on it. They'll see the white flag this time by. <laughs> One to go at Las Vegas. So this obviously is not team orders. I don't know with a Serbia who is closing up now. Both of them on the button. Serbia trying to high side Bourdais. Can he get under him? Can he cross underneath him? Down the back straightaway. Final time tonight at Las Vegas. The Nella straightaway into three. Bourdais too high and too far behind. He's got the fastest lap in the race. It won't be enough. Bourdais off of turn four. Heading to the checkered flag for the fifth time in 2005. Sebastian hey, Bourdais. Way to stick with that car. White flag is waving for Scott Dixon. Less than three quarters of a mile to go. Ganassi domination. That's what we've seen here at Richmond. Off the fourth corner, here's the checkered flag. Scott Dixon wins. Way to go, Scott. Great job tonight, man. You won it for Well done. He wins his third race of the season, his second win here at Richmond International. Cheever stays well in front. And now the 197 marker is on the board. A.J. Foy. Four oh, times. they're coming up on lap traffic there. That's Cheever going back. Eddie Cheever is Eddie. not going to make the distance. Tenapaldi's going to first. Villanova into second. Cheever sliding back at 198. Oh, wow. wow. Do you That's believe it? I... And it's a battle for the lead. Two laps to go, one lap to go. Getting down to the final moment. This is it, like Phoenix, but even closer. Finapalli in front, Villanova in second. Closing ground. Wow. Coming down, checkers are out. Give it to Finapalli. 
the real question is how is Dario going to do this last lap and not breathe? Well, right now, all he's doing is getting the interval from his spotters. He can see both Max Wilson and Gidley in his mirror here. And he's going to slow down as much as possible to let these guys get up behind him. If Gidley doesn't get a shot at him going down into the chicane on the last lap, if he can't close up this interval, then it's a matter of getting through the chicane and hoping the car doesn't cough, doesn't run out of fuel, headed for the start-finish line. But look at the interval decrease here coming through turns three and four. Yeah, that mostly was a decrease under braking, though. It goes back to where it was. Wilson separates him. Gidley waits until the last possible second to break there. Working the final turns of the final lap. Well, there's Wilson. Gidley's got to get this exit exactly right. Stand on the throttle. Push the overtake button. And now he's got to run up behind. You can see he's closing down on Dario. His only chance will be coming off the chicane, headed for the start and finish line. It's going to be a difficult place to pass. They'll both swing as wide as they can. Gidley tries to work him. Gidley is there. But Dario Franchitti does it. Pagano trying to get back to victory lane. He's pretty close here, Paul. The gap between Sato and Juan Pablo Montoya. I'll tell you what, it'll be fireworks. This is his last chance, really. And there you see Dixon using up what he has remaining on the push to pass. The final lap. Simon Pagano in front. It was pit strategy. A great pit work by his team. Hot cars. This could, this could be a problem as well. They're going to catch these guys before the end of the lap. So you would not want to catch these guys with two corners to go. They're going awfully slow. And that's exactly what's going to happen here as they make the right turn. And down the back stretch they go for the last time down Seaside Way. This is a problem. Foxworth is very off the pace right here. Into turn nine and ten. The final time through the hairpin. Will this come into play? Look at Dixon right on the back bumper of the 22. Right on the back wing. Can he make it happen? Simon Pagano trying to hold on. Pagano's going to win at Long Beach. Two and a half miles to go for Jill DeFerrin. To you, his heartbeat is going so hard right now that his chest is probably hurting. Remember last year, he lost a tire after a pit stop. Looked like he had the opportunity to win that race. If Pastor Nevis is going to have a chance, it would be now. He tries to get a little clean air. Doesn't work for him through turn three. Pastor Nevis still trying to close. DeFerrin looks at the front stretch. He can see the checkered flag now. And Jill DeFerrin becomes the 62nd driver to win in the Indianapolis 500. Jill DeFerrin. One lap to go. If Bobby Ray Hall has anything else to deliver, now is the time to send it special delivery. Here he is in turns one and two, and he's closer this time. He's moved in just that much more, but on this straightaway, look at Fittipaldi leap away. Up to turn three. And out of the turn where they've had trouble before, had that big hesitation in the race, St. Antoine and Woodbridge. Now up onto the Chrysler Freeway, down to Congress for the final time. Emerson Fittipaldi still in front and draws away. Coming up to that hard 90 degree left hand turn onto Mobian. Headed for Larned. Fittipaldi trying to win it again. <laughs> this track sure likes Brazilian drivers. I would seem. But remember, he's had trouble just at that tunnel entrance twice, David. And Ray Hall. He's only got to do it one more time down to Cobo Hall. This is the slowest corner here. If he's going to have a braking problem, it could occur there, but he seems to traverse the Oh, Jeff Andretti in front in the 786 car. Yellow flag is out. Final oh, time through. Ooh, he's going to have to pass Andretti in the tunnel. Or maybe just on the other side by the pump house. Here they come out. It's clear. It's a run to the finish now. 
closing in. Reha, look how he cuts it down into that final straightaway now. From Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Miami, Florida. Fighting to the finish. Checkered flag about to be unfurled. And at the line, 44-year-old Emerson Fittipaldi has just won his 13th cart PPG race. One more, and that would tie his mark with his Formula One victories. Chip Ganassi looks on. Calvin Fish. Chip, you have a decision to make. He's on the radio right now. We'll try and hang in there with him. Chip, you have a decision to make. Bruno's making a run of the championship. A young man right behind him who wants his first win of the year. Well, you know, Calvin, historically, we've had no team orders. Uh, and uh, that's the way it's going to stay today, I guess. We appreciate it. It's almost too late for team orders now. God bless Chip Ganassi. Less than a lap to go. Jankara and Dixon. And Bruno appears to be able to pull away just a little bit. Reaching deep, looking for his second win of the year. He won on the oval at Motegi with a dominant performance after Paul Tracy dropped out of that race with mechanical problems. If he can hold on, it'll be his third career win, and the crowd is cheering. Oh, there's Dixon. He's right there. Here's the final corner. It's going to be a drag race, nose to tail. 100 yards to go, Great checkered flags wave, and Bruno Jacquera holds on. You led every lap. Leading Great from job. flag to flag in a 1-2 finish for that man, Chip Ganassi. Two more good laps, two laps. Two laps, but at this point, at this distance, Dixon can already start to feel turbulent air from the lap cars. He's been up front for most of the night. He hasn't had to deal with this. One more now, one lap. One to go, one and a half miles for Dixon to get his fifth win here at Texas Motor Speedway. What a proud moment for him too, oh. because he's impressed with McLaughlin, a fellow Kiwi, and to come home in a one-two. He's got traffic is getting closer, but I don't think it's gonna cause an issue. Connor Daly, he'll hang on there. Check it, flag at the ready. Scott Dixon wins back-to-back -back years and wins at Texas Motor Speedway for a fifth time. Well done, Scott. Great job. Incredible. White flag. Jimmy Vassar, Zanardi attacking for third, make that second. Oh, will they go three wide? No. Is this a ploy by Jimmy Vassar to back off a little bit, get Greg Moore's draft, and see if he can snooker him on the last lap. Moore, oh, look at that is crap. Look at Jimmy coming. Here comes Zanardi. Does he have the horsepower despite that smoke from the back of the car? Greg Moore draws to a couple of car lengths away, and he will win the US 500. And I believe Jimmy Vassar hung on for a second over his teammate as Alex Zanardi's engine coughs its last. It all comes down to this moment. The white flag comes out at the start-finish line. Just one to go. Teammates, Kanan, Frankiti. The move will have to come heading into three. About 40 feet separate those two cars. Frankiti decides to pull a little high. Is he trying to aggravate uh, any conditions on Kanan's car? He's setting himself for the finish now. Tony Kanan makes that final turn. Heads for the finish line. Frankiti it doesn't have the power to get there. It's Kanan, then Frankiti, then Alex Barron, Sam Hornet Jr., Adrian Fernandez. You know, Dixon, white flag right there. Yeah, like you said, Dixon, hey, oh, Scott, where'd you come from? Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> up to the top ten. And we now have our first two drivers that are out of overtake. Andretti and Mike Conway used it up that last lap. Dixon trying to fight off my, uh, Marco Andretti's challenge here in the late going. Meanwhile, back up front, it is still... Look at Conway he, go. He wants second. He's on the podium. I want more. Man, oh, man. Well, this is his last shot as they set up for nine. He was close in seven, but Robbie, I don't think he's close enough here. That's the spot right there. Mike's previous best finish was sixth at Watkins Glen.
and he's a few feet away from a podium finish. Here they come into the final corner. It's Dario, Briscoe, and Conway across the line, and Dario Franchini wins his fourth victory of the season. His 12th in the IndyCar Series. It's his first win here at Sonoma. Well, up front, Adrian Fernandez will have one lap to go. White flag this time by it and waves from the flag stand for Adrian Fernandez with Scott Pruitt just behind. And they do not want to give a full course yellow, obviously, with one lap to go. They don't want to end under a yellow. They're going to put a local yellow out in that area. Two and a quarter miles to go. Less than that now. Scott Pruitt knows that the only place he's going to be able to get by Adrian Fernandez is at the end of this straightaway right down under breaking into turn three. This is probably his last chance right here. He's not close enough. And you can only hope for Adrian to make a mistake now. Adrian, of course, moves well away from that accident. Brutal will close up a little bit here. It's now down to Adrian. No mistakes from inside the cockpit. Slower car in front. Where will they catch the slower traffic up ahead? In the carousel. Without question now, it will be the 300th win for Ford. 12th in a row this season for Firestone. And as the slower traffic moves aside, they come across the line in formation. Adrian Fernandez picks up his third career victory, his second of the season with his teammate Scott Pruitt just behind. Just remember, they're going to be able to draft past you, so let them have it. Where do you want to be, Paul? What's um, the answer to the biggest question of the 500 miler? I'm thinking right now, I want to be in second. Tagliani's going to figure into this finish as he runs up there with everybody else. Last lap. Oh! They touched! Oh, that one was close. So Tagliani comes up there. Oh! Oh, whoa, whoa, Man, Jardine almost slid up into Franchitti now. But it's it, the two teammates helping each other. And it may be Carpentier looking for his first ever win. Carpentier at the line. Patrick Carpentier takes his first victory. I'll tell you, Chip Ganassi's probably down to get ready to slit his wrist because he drove himself crazy, dominated this race throughout the day. Looks like he's going to lose it to Castor Nevis. Unbelievable. And remember Indy, white Weldon, flag, flag. Weldon white dominated flag. Indy. Same thing. Weldon had Indy dominated. Had Indy dominated, or had it dominated here. So down the back stretch for the final time, Elio Castroneves. Looking like he's going to win again. Hang on as they go through turns three and four. Dixon. And Weldon. White flag. Not going to be enough. Elio Castroneves takes the win. His 10th career victory. <laughs> Another great restart by Davy Hamilton. Another position. It's really hard to get positions on these miles, and he's done it twice. All that modified racing paint on for Davy Hamilton. Greg Wall pulls on to second behind Stewart. White flag, one to go now. And we're running over the race. Very, very slim, assuming he takes the win here. They assume anybody takes the win here. I don't think we're going to be able to. in a big run through turns one and two. Final lap, and it's a three-way shootout. Is Sato even in it? Here comes Rossi. Rossi is clawing Simon Pagano back. Out of turn two. Down the back stretch for the final time. And Pagano's trying to run away, and Rossi's not letting it happen. Still single file. Look out. Rossi on the high line. He has outside, to take it back him. in. The short shoot. Clear by two. Rossi's going to have a massive draft on Simon Pagano into the home stretch. Less Get than back. half a mile. Simon Pagano sweeps him up the bay and Free wins his maiden in the 500. How about that? He 
He's won once in IndyCar Series competition. Former Formula One driver. Had one getaway a few years ago. Now he's going to see the white flag, and he's opened up a little bit of a gap on Castro Neves. One lap to go in the Indy 500. White flag, white flag. Castro Neves tries to close, Sato tries to defend, two corners until the checkered flag. Still clear by two. The one that got away comes back to him. Checkered flag is in the air, and the 101st Indianapolis 500 is won by Takuma Sato. Will come down and take the white flag this white time. Flag, Sam. One to go, one to go. She got it now one the time. More lap to go. Will it be Cheever or Sam Hornish Jr. at Kansas? They go into turns one and two, and Hornish drops back by about two car lengths, perhaps waiting to get a good run. There is a lap car up ahead that could play a factor. Eddie Cheever Jr. could be driving to victory for the 35A a Infinity engine for the first time in history. Here he comes off the fourth turn. He takes the flag, and Eddie Cheever Jr. wins for the fifth time. In the order they're running right now, it would be a tie at the top of the championship, and based on his four wins this season versus the two now for Weldon as the white flag comes out, the title would go to Penske and Sam Hornish. Dixon's not going to give up. Dixon's still going to try on this last lap to get this uh, top spot away from his teammate. It looks like the fast part of the racetrack has moved up, and Dixon just can't get enough of a run out there. And Weldon wants to win bad enough that he's using up a whole lot of race time. There it is. So Hornish takes the championship. The interval doesn't close. Ayrton Dare is running hard. All he's doing now, Paul, is the foot is flat down on the throttle, looking in his mirror, talking to the car. But Hornish looks like he's got a little bit of a slipstream he's caught up here. Hornish is in a great position as they head for the checkered flag through turn three. Through turn four now, Dare's holding him. Hornish going to try to cut the triangle. No! He doesn't get it done. Dare and A.J. Foyt take the win. As Elio Castroneves looks for his fifth win of his IRL career, Sam Hornish now has one chance. There is traffic ahead. He follows Castroneves over. He moves high. No, it is not going to happen this time. Elio Castroneves. We'll see the checkered flag first at Nazareth Great and jump, take Sam. the win. Great His jump. fifth no career bad. win no and a 25-point no lead in the championship now for Castro Nevis. Think about this. Remember that target Chip Ganassi Racing as A.J. Foyt is all over the nine car of Scott Dixon. Ganassi Racing is going to give all their winnings to the Iowa Red Cross. With one lap remaining, the winner's check looks like it's going to go to flood relief victims and oh so how appropriate. Into the third quarter. You heard the call. Here comes Dan Weldon as he brings it across the stripe to take the win in Hideki Muto second. Great job, Dan. What you thinking of, man? One more lap. Can Scott Dixon do it for win number 50, or will Sato win in back-to-back -back weeks and back-to-back -back years here at Worldwide Technology Raceway? It's going to be yeah, tough from now. He just washed up the track a little bit, oh, but he's still right there. Dixon's got dirty air. Dixon's as close as he's been to dirty air in front. Sato with a runoff, turn four. Scott Dixon is going to be the 11th different winner here from 11 races. Unbelievable finish. Dixon is a 50-time oh, yeah. IndyCar winner. Unbelievable as they come down for the white flag. One more Still lap to go. Could be as close a finish as Scott Sharp and McGee in the first race here in June. Oh, look at and this. look at look Boat. At Boat. Boat's going to help Cheever win this race. Goodyear pulls ahead slightly oh, no. at the Boat end of the backstretch. 
Goodyear has the lead as they head for the fourth corner, coming down for the checkered flag. Who will win it in it's Texas? Down, it it's Scott Goodyear. Charging, charging, closing the gap. The white flag comes out. And for the Radisson 200, the final lap at Pikes Peak. And can he do it? Sam Schmidt trying to get around Greg Ray and Team Menard. Two pros in front of him, Lazier and Cheever, so they shouldn't come into play. Here they come battling to turn three. Two more quarters for Greg Ray. Ray out of three, trying to make it wide. Look at Sam Schmidt. He's going to challenge out of turn four, but Greg Ray is going to hold on and win the Radisson 200 at Pikes Peak. What a fantastic finish here on Fox Sports Net as the celebration begins. Greg Ray gets his first win. Weldon had the run a couple laps ago, made a mistake, got too high and lost. He can't afford any mistakes right now. He knows exactly what he did wrong, where he needs to pick his pass. He gets a big draft down the front straightaway. White flag's waving. One lap to go. It's Dixon. Will he pick up career win number six? Or will his teammate, Dan Weldon, take home career win number 11? Dixon keeping the low line, hugging the bottom of the racetrack. Coming out of four. One last shot for Weldon. He won't do it. Some heads up driving, smart driving by Dario Franchitti. You can tell you right now his foot is not off that gas pedal whatsoever. The, white, the white flag is out. Excuse me, Scott. The white flag is out. The final lap of the 2005 season is underway. Dario Franchitti, can he hold off his teammate Tony Kanaan? And the emotion just too great for Ashley Judd. Kanan will try to go to the outside. Frankini holding the inside line. As they come out of turn number four, Tony Kanan makes a run at the line. It is Dario Frankini. The surf is up at Laguna Beach, and Dario Frankini is riding a wave to victory lane here in Montana. Looked like Rosenquist almost got into the back of Lungard as there's side-by-side -side contact. I think that's Will Power and maybe Castroneves or Pagino back there going wheel to wheel. One to go. You saw the white flag. They're on their way home. Less than two miles. One to go. Which New Zealander is going to do it? They're is it Scott Dixon or Scott McLaughlin? They'll both be on the push to pass. They have plenty to burn. Scott Dixon got the advantage down into turn four. There'll be no passing from here through at least turn seven. Maybe Scott McLaughlin could be brave into eight, but it's all going to be down into turn nine, Townsend. What kind of jump can Scott McLaughlin get off of this corner? The right-hander, how early can he get to power? He's had the best power down all weekend. A good, not great jump for McLaughlin, but he's in the draft if. This is it. This is the opportunity for McLaughlin. Here he comes on the Chip Ganassi racer. Is he close enough? How big will he send it? Can he? He's too far back. You can still do it into turn 11 if you're close enough. He's not really thinking championship. He's thinking race win. Scott Dixon's the one that's got a benefit here from the points. The PNC Bank Honda. It was a Ganassi victory last year. Will it be a Ganassi victory this year? After having such an eventful Whoa. start to the race, McLaughlin tries to drag race Dixon and can't do it. Scott Dixon wins the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix. The white flag is waiting at the yard of Brinks. And we enter the final lap of the Indianapolis 500. Kimball has caught up to power. One lap to go. Who's going to win it? Power slipped in turn two. Justin Wilson just came off the pit lane. He and Munoz had to stop for fuel. Final two corners for Montoya. He was all the way back in 30th place after an opening lap's crash. Here they come to the checkered flag. And the winner of the Indianapolis 500 is Juan Pablo Montoya. Yeah! Yeah! Erickson sprints away.
away from Joseph Newgarden and is doing what he did a year ago. The second year in a row we see him unleashing the dragon as we see almost contact between Palo and Ferrucci. Erickson leads out a one. Ferrucci threw a shoulder at Alex Palo and said, don't you dare. Ferrucci trying to get a draft off Newgarden and Erickson, but Newgarden with a monster run off turn two. Joseph Newgarden has never won the Indianapolis 500 and he's ahead on this last lap. Joseph Newgarden, is this the moment when the pain ends? By one, by one. The drought, is it over for no Joseph Newgarden? Or does Marcus Erickson have something? By two. Team Penske at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. One. And We're Joseph home, Newgarden <laughs> finally wins the Indianapolis 500. Uh, you got this, Felix. Remember, it's your teammate. Make it clean. Oh, they're telling him, go for it. There's no team orders. What's gonna happen? He's right on the back bumper of Dixon now. No push to pass for Rosenquist. Dixon has four seconds. This is one lap to go. I love it. Ganassi is letting the drivers fight it out amongst themselves. Who's the best? Who's gonna get it done? The master, the 45-time winner and five-time champion, Scott Dixon oh. trying to defend from oh. his rookie teammate. They come together oh. in the keyhole, nearly touch. Oh, and Newgarden and Hunter Ray get together oh, for the podium. No. Newgarden's off. That is a huge championship implication. That's the championship leader around, and the rest of the crowd will pick up massive points in the title fight with four to go after today. And, and Dixon could hold off Rosenquist. This allows Dixon to close in the championship massively, but does Rosenquist get Dixon right here? He's He'll got... look around the inside, now try to swing to the outside. The teammates are side by side. One going for win number 46, the other for number one in IndyCar. I... Dixon is still in front. I Dixon's think Dixon completely... has it. He's out of tires, but I don't think I don't think he can handle it. Three more turns to go. Championship points at stake. Black and rims at stake. Felix Rosenquist has a couple of more corners. His veteran teammate, Scott Dixon, trying to hold him off one more time. Final corner, Dixon wiggles. To the line, Rosenquist on his gearbox, dives into the side, well done there, Scott. Scott job, Dixon will lead. win. One of the closest road course races we've seen. You're looking out the side. You got back in front. You're clearing back. Keep pushing, buddy. Push, push, push. Push. Uh, how is this traffic going to figure out? Come on. Going for turn three on the final line. Hornets is there. Hornets is closing. White flag this time by. Flag the bastard, bring it home. Outside, 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 outside. And Dominguez is staying on the outside. He has two more shots at it in the corners. Look at Jordan pulling up. He'll have to decide which guy to go with. Where do I put myself? Nose to tail now, all three cars. Bourdain with the lead off the corner. Dominguez will try to charge. Jourdain looking for daylight. He will not find it. Sebastian Bourdain wins the German 500 by the merest of margins over Mario Dominguez and Michel Jourdain Jr. What a finish. So the way he brings it back. When he gets on it, Tony Kanaan's got to be right with him. He can't stand to lose anything. Tony Kanaan closes in. Takagi comes up green as well. Flag, That's green, Kenny Brick. Green, green is out. Here we go. One lap. No opportunity to miss any shifts. The driver has to have a perfect restart. Takagi's getting a great benefit here from the two cars in front. Tony Kanaan takes a chance and moves outside of Unser Jr. He stays out there, but Unser Jr. maintains the low side. Now down the back stretch, drag racing side by side. Takagi looks for who he can help. Kanan maintains outside, high, there. but Unser Jr. is able to push ahead. He might have gotten a little push off Takagi. They come for the finish go, line. Go, 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 go. Yeah. And it's Unser Jr. Unser Jr., then Kanan oh, yeah, and Takagi. It, One, two, three. And it'll be the white flag next time around. The question mark is the fuel tank of both of those cars. See all the debris they just ran over? A lot of stuff going in the air, coming off the tires.
and one lap to go. Will Buddy Rice repeat his victory at Indianapolis? Tony Kanan chooses the high line. Rice leads him onto the back stretch. The engine's gulping fuel. Now they head for the final two turns. Tony Kanan makes a move to the outside. It looks like they're going to run for the line with no problem. And Buddy Rice leads Tony Kanan to the line and takes the win, the third win of his career. Here we go. This time by the white flag is out. Hornish. Marty, he's got one shot going down three and four. He's going to have to choose his line and watch very smartly as Hornish pushes him high and now tries to take the air away from him. Going into turn three, Hornish hugs the white line down low. Will he pick up his 17th career win or will Weldon get his 11th? Coming for the strike. Here comes the checkered flag. Sam Hornish goes back to back and does it again. Coming to the white flag this time by. Here it is. One to go. White flag. Remember we said last lap, last turn. That's what it'll come down to. And in the high side, Tony knows he's going to have to do it up top if he's going to get it done. Down the back stretch, he tucks back in underneath. The last time Sam Hornish won was last year at Kentucky, almost a full season ago. It seems like it to Sam. Coming down to the checkered flag, Sam Hornish. Good work, buddy, good work. The white flag is out. How low can you go, Scott Sharp? Holding off Vitor Mira, number 17, goes to the outside, gets a look, tries to get a run. Will this be the lap that Vitor can turn the trick? Setting him up, having a look. Make it happen. Look at you go, baby. Look at this happen. Out of turn number four, right, Mira easy. takes there a look go. at Scott Sharp at the line. Scott Sharp, number eight, the first win this season. Michael closing rapidly, and Moore closing behind Andretti. White flag this time by. Bring it home, Michael. What else can you say with a mile and a half to go for Michael Andretti? Check out, that was Father Mario telling Michael, bring it home. There is Moore, who is right there working traffic. Moore absolutely flying through three and four. They'll come off the turn, nose to tail. Greg Moore looking for a way by. He's within a car lane, but he won't get it done. Michael Andretti comes Very through. Good, Very good. Very good. White flag comes out. A mile and a half to go at Chicagoland. Adrian Fernandez looks very powerful. Down the back stretch. Don't forget all the problems that Adrian Fernandez had today. But here is Herta. Herta makes his move. Herta's on the high side, but he's going to have to go further, and it isn't going to work. Adrian Fernandez has taken his second win in the IRL. Look how high they are off of four. A big difference in lines from the lap previously. Gets they a see sneak. the white flag. Hornet, who had been trying Catherine Evans high, drops in low on Catherine Evans. They're now on the back track. They're into the headwind. Outside. Outside. Still outside. Outside. He's going to push him high, try and keep outside. him high. Outside. Oh, this one is going to be tight. They come to the finish line. Harness has done it. Harness beats Castro Nevis in his 12th career win. Not short for Dario Franchitti. He's got Taylor one more left. White flag, what? Less than a mile down the backstretch. If Marco has anything, anything, he's going to have to do it on the high side because Dario's not giving up the low line. Got a wing. Got a wing. That's the wing. Coming out of That's four. His clear, clear, win clear, at clear, India clear, is back to Coming up on Callum Eilat, he's had a positive weekend as well. White flag waves, one to go for Scott McLaughlin. Lee Callum Eilat's last lap was 190 miles an hour. This is going to give Newgarden a chance on the back straightaway. Look out, look out. Malukas is first one on the list. Got to go to the inside. McLaughlin can't get there though, not close enough. 
teammate is coming. Here comes Joseph Newgarden oh, on the high side. Newgarden on the top line. It's going to be a drag race. Newgarden has done it. Newgarden wins on the final lap. Newgarden man. How about that? Man. White flag this time by. Was that a championship move? It was a race win. It was a race winning move. Here comes Bruno. They get the white flag. Two lap cars are up in front. Both these drivers holding it to the back. Bourdais by a car. Should care of Bourdais may be stuck on the bottom. Third turn, last time around at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Should care of may not get there. Bourdais the leader. They come to the line. It's Sebastian Bourdais. Bourdais the winner. Fuel takes a look at a white flag. One mile to go, but so Spiri is right there. Lion Dyke comes up to third as we work the final lap with a lot of traffic ahead. So Spiri gets way high. Is Fuel about to take his first win? Well, we got traffic. He's got a corner left. He's got one of them. He's got a little bit of space. Look at on the outside. So Spiri, so Spiri moves high on the outside. Fuel just may get trapped as they come to the line. He comes way wide. So Spiri makes the drive, but Fuel takes the win. White flag. I believe Marco can do this. I really think he's got it. He's got to hold the line. Low lane, Marty Scott. This kid, I believe, is going to win this race. The most exciting Daytona 5. I'm sorry, the most exciting Indy 500 ever. Down the back stretch for the final time. His father has not won it in 15 tries. Through three. Harnish closing one more time. Coming out of four. Down the front stretch. It's a drag race. Marco Andretti. Hornish, who's going to win at the stripe? It's Hornish. Oh, Hornish wins. Hornish wins by six one hundredths of a second. The closest finish, second closest in Indy history. Here they come to the white flag. We'll enter the final lap of the Indianapolis 500. Ryan hunter Ray to the outside of Elio Castellanos for the race lead. That kind of drafting warm up the photo finish cameras. Half a lap to go. Ryan hunter Ray leads. Elio Castroneves is second. Can Castroneves close on him? He's a couple of car lengths back. One last corner to go. Checker flag is in the air. Here comes Castroneves. He won't get there. Florida's Ryan hunter Ray wins the Indianapolis 500. Captain America pulled it off. White flag. One lap to go at Michigan. A day that started, well, seven hours and 40 minutes ago is finally going to come to conclusion. Who's going to win it? Will it be the 32-year-old Tony Kanan from Brazil, or will it be the 20-year-old from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, Marco Andretti? Down the backstretch, they're wheel to wheel, going into three. Here comes Kanan, just like before, able to close the door and take it through four. Coming to the stretch, it will be Tony Kanaan in front with his third win this season and 10th of his career and Marco Andretti right behind. Scott Sharp has the advantage as they come down for the white flag. One to go, a mile and a half left to Texas. McGee heads for the high side. Oh, they're so close going into turn one. He got a little run going in, but that low side is... We're on the last lap of the race, the last lap of the race, a half a lap to go, McGee and Scott Sharp battle for the lead and the win at Texas, they come to the four corner side by side, Scott Sharp drives, gets the advantage and comes down and wins it. Worked as a mechanic in Europe, giving driving last lessons. Last lap, last lap, last lap, last lap. All right, this is it. Fernandez had the lead. He crossed the line two tenths of a second ahead of Bunny Rice. Now down the back stretch. They're in a straight string. 
If Rice is going to move, this is it. Same for Weldon and Matsura. Off the final corner. Looking outside, no way. Good no contact. Fernandez takes the win. Got His got first IRL race. And he does that. Congratulations, Tom Anderson. He does it in his 10th career start. Little Al tries to the outside as the white flag comes out. Side by side through the first turn. Little Al takes the advantage running high and comes into the lead. Less than two miles to go now in this 500 mile run and Al Hunter Jr. picks the lead up again. But what about Scott? He's going to chase Al everywhere he can. He's got the draft now. Well, Scott Pruitt may have the advantage coming to the final turns. Did he move too quick? Did he move too soon? He still they got They continue a... side by side. Allen Sir Jr. and Scott Pruitt come to the line. And Pruitt's got him. Scott yeah, Pruitt yeah, takes yeah, the win. Yeah, yeah. One of the best races I've seen. Listen to him work the gearbox right now, trying to keep that Chevrolet engine in the peak power range. White we... flag, white flag. The white flag is out. The final lap of the Bombardier Learjet 500. Thomas Schechter leads. Sam Hornis Jr. sits in second place. As Scott pointed out, Sam Hornis Jr. has a history of faking you out and taking the inside or outside line. Schechter is definitely going to protect that inside line. If Hornis Jr. is going to make a move, it's going to have to be to the outside. He's looking as they come to the finish line. Thomas Schechter has exercised the demons. The Chevrolet, the Platinum Panther Pencil car has taken the victory. Sam Hornis Jr. will take second. Tony Kanon will settle for third. And John Barnes is one happy man in Texas tonight. Carriers on the overtake again, Bob. Here they come to the white flag. Oh, one more lap, a mile and a half of racing, and he number one. And it's gonna, it's gonna be hard for Scott, but I guarantee you he's gonna have a go. That boy's a fighter. He's gonna try and go around the high side in turn three. Like Let's see what he oh, does here in turns three and four. He'll look to the high side of Franchitti. But no, and there's no room up there either. Off the fourth corner, on to the trioval. And oh, it's going to be a close battle, but it is Dario Franchini by five one hundredths of a second. Franchini wins over his teammate by 0 .05 seconds with power third, Tagliani fourth, and Sato in fifth. And Al Unser Jr. sees Dwayne Sweeney's white flag two and a half miles. One more lap to go. If Scott Goodyear has a chance, the time is now. Don't forget, 10 years ago, John Cox and Rick Mears raced on the last lap for the finish. John Cox won that one. That was experience over Rick Mears' relative inexperience. Will that happen again here today? They're on the back stretch. 223 miles an hour on the last lap. No traffic involved. Turn for home now on the main stretch. Scott Goodyear closes in. He looks for a place to come by. Scott Goodyear tries it, but no. I believe that's the closest finish in Indy history. Closer than the race 10 years ago when Gordon Dark, John Cock beat Rick Mir. Here's the white flag. We got one more lap to go at Chicagoland. Wow, the point swing here with Frank Heaty in the lead and power having to fuel. But it's not over. Here comes Weldon. Dan Weldon, as we mentioned, finished second in Indianapolis. That's where he's running now. Marco Andretti looks to the high side. They come off of corner number four. Let's see who wins it. It's going to be Dario Franchitti winning with right. Dan right. Weldon Thank second God. and Marco Andretti third. One to go. Michael wanted the lead with one lap to go. I'm surprised at that. But one takes it back. Montoya down inside. Montoya takes the lead of the race. Carso Marquez, a slower car just ahead. Michael darts out on the back stretch. Michael tries to get it down inside. Montoya's going to stay right there on the outside. The slower car is just ahead. Montoya. Now Andretti, and they almost touch. They may have touched. The slower car is going to be a factor as Montoya brings him to the line. And Montoya takes the Michigan 500. What a finish.
And Ed Carpenter is in with a shot of victory. He was last last night in final practice. I spoke with his engineer, Peter Craig, today. He said, it wasn't looking good. It sure is looking oh, good he's now. he's got a run there. He's got a nice run coming off the corner. Does he go for it? <laughs> coming to the white flag. One to go. One and a quarter miles left in this race. Under the lights, the final oval of 2019. Perucci's got a run coming off the turn two. He's right there. Kanan blocks. Oh, He's going to make him go in the gray. Oh, this could be, be disastrous. Backs out of it. Oh, oh no. He's going to lose it. Hold on, hold on. The checkered flag is waiting. Is it? Is it Sato? Is it Carpenter? It's going to be close. It's to Kuma Sato. As they come to the line, the white flag is out. We've got one lap to go at Michigan. And one lap left to go. Todd and I just looked out our window. There is not a soul sitting in their seat right now. They're all standing up along the front stretch here. Just can't believe what they see. Out of turn number two, Brian Herta is your leader. Dan Wellen sits in second. The quarters get even tighter. They've got two more turns to make something happen. They make the turn out of turn four as they come to the line. The checkered flag is out at the line. Brian Herta, Brian Herta gets his first win of the season. Dan Weldon will have to settle for second. Max Pappas is going to see an incredible sight next time around. The white flag will tell him just two miles, one lap to go. And if he can do it, he becomes the sixth driver to score his first career win in a 500-mile race at Michigan. Now one lap to go. Max Pappas is on the final lap for Bobby Rahal. Kanan crossed the line three seconds behind him. Montoya four seconds back. Down the back straightaway. Will Max Pappas become the third first-time winner this year? It sure looks that way. He runs out of fuel. He runs out of fuel. Kanan screams past. Kanan screams into the lead. Montoya trying to take him to the line. Oh, oh, so very close. Montoya jumped low at the line. It looked, looked for a moment there like Pappas was just slowing for the flag, and then he slowed further. And by 32 thousandths, Kanan takes Montoya. to go and there's no decision about this race. Look at outside, look at outside. 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 Look at out
And it's going to be Scott Sharp that leads the next to last lap. Who will it be when they come around again? Sharp, Hornish, Buell at Texas for the win. They go through one and two in the same order. Hornish has got to make a move here soon, and he's got to do it to the top side of the racetrack. Will he have the momentum to do it? He goes to the high side, but Scott Sharp maintains the slight advantage as they come off the fourth corner at the line. Oh, Hornish got him! Got him. Oh, my gosh, what a finish. Unbelievable. Here we go. Good start by Tony here, but here comes Fernandez. Watch, Tony's going high. He's going to push him up high in the racetrack. Look how close they got, and that's almost 200. They went three wide, then almost four wide behind the leaders. They come nose to nose down the back stretch. Fernandez high, Kanan is on the low side. Buddy Rice comes around Sam Hornish and goes to third place. Dan Weldon's down on the low side of Hornish. The battle is for the lead, though. Tony Kanan now has just a few inches on Fernandez. They make a turn for the line. They're still side by side. Fernandez just a bit ahead. And Fernandez, Fernandez takes the win. Third win this season. And Tony Kanan takes the championship. Dan Weldon was able to push his way up into third place on that one lap run. And they come down to get the white flag. One more lap to go at Kentucky Speedway. Wheel to wheel through the corners. It's Carpenter and Briscoe. They go off the second corner and down the back stretch, and Ed has just a slight advantage. Look back there, however, at Kanan and Elio Castro Nevis. They're battling for the third spot. They come off of corner four. Ed Carpenter has the advantage as they come off the corner at the line. It's going to be Briscoe. Nice job, babe. White flag. White flag. White flag. Does Dan Weldon have anything left? If he's got it, he's got to pull it the trigger now. Castro Nevis lives in nearby Miami, has no never won her. Here we go, down the back stretch, Weldon on the high side, side by side, through three. Who's going to win it? Coming to the home stretch. Castro Nevis on the inside, Weldon on the outside, at the stripe, it is Weldon. Weldon beats Castro Nevis. His 10th career win, second straight here at Homestead. And again, heartbreak for Elio. It is Weldon, the Toyotas of Penske decide to go high. Weldon keeps the low line, and here comes Tony Kanan on the inside. Smart team movement by Team Penske right now. They're going around the high side the longer way. Will the drafting work and overpower the Honda power that's on the low line? We'll have to see. Chicago breeds close finishes, and they are going to make it yet another one. It's Weldon on the inside. Castronemis on the outside. Somebody wake the queen, because Dan Weldon just walked away nice with the checkered flag. That was unbelievable. And the guy that's got a shot at it right now is Barron, and he knows it, but he's searching. He doesn't know what to do. Look who Sam is on the white line. Looking, Sam Hornish. Brand new Chevrolet Gen 4 engine being chased by Toyota. A Baron Chapter Sharp Dixon and Takagi. Honda is eight. Here we go. They go side by side in the three. Coming for the line. Coming for the flag. Hornish has got a bad line, but Baron now pushes ahead. Baron, Baron takes it. Baron takes the win from second place. With the white flag out, who will win in Kansas? Look at this grandstand, everybody's standing up and not an inch given. Weldon trying to push Kanan up, Kanan trying to push Weldon down. And the guy that's gonna play a role in this is probably Vitor Mira, who will he side on to sort of help slipstream? As they come out of turn number four, it's Dan Weldon on the inside, Tony Kanan, his teammate, Vitor Mira tries to slip to the low side, can he get it done? No, it's Tony Kanan at the line. Tony Kanan, his fifth career win, his first win since Nashville last year, and this is the fifth win for Andretti Green. Unser Jr. clearly in front now. Jeff Ward in the second. Position six on fuel. White flag comes out. We're going to start the final lap with Unser Jr. in front. Over 83,000 people here, and they're all standing up and cheering. Looking high, looking high. 
high. Junior and goes down to protect that bottom. Here comes Jeff Ward. Looking high, he's high. Car high. 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 Keep pushing. Checkered flag is out ahead. And Jeff Ward takes it. Jeff Ward by inches. Herta sees the white flag. One to go. Hornish now surges ahead. Now well, that's very important what we just saw there, Paul, because at the line, Herta was actually not far enough ahead of Hornish. Closest finish. Closest finish in IRL history was here last year. Will it be closer this year? Hornish and Herta. They hammer for turn three. Come through turn three. The final corner just ahead. Dixon closes down in behind them, and they're going to go three wide at the line. And Hornish takes it at the line. Dixon gets second, and Herta drops to third. Well done, Sammy. I don't know what to say, buddy. Oh, well look done. at that. All right, one more lap to go. Carpenter led that lap. Stick with it, buddy. You can do this. Now watch Scott Dixon as he's going to take a look to the outside. Now, Franchini's out of, out of push to passes, and Carpenter has one lap. Outside. Oh, that could be the difference. They go down the back stretch yeah, yeah. and on, buddy. race into I'm turn doing, number overtake three. Overtake. Will Ed Carpenter be able to get his first yeah, win in the eyes on IndyCar series? Oh, baby, Here they come to the line, oh, baby, and it is oh, Carpenter. And yeah. Carpenter wins. <laughs> All right now, all he can do is win it. White flag, white flag, one to go, one to go, all over your butt, stay tight, stay <laughs> tight. And these guys know it. Still side by side, Hornet Jr. had the lead by inches as they crossed the line last time. Now he comes a little bit further ahead. Still inside, still inside. They come for the line. the winner. This is going to get really, really close. It's, these guys are White almost flag. wrecking. Last lap. One and a half miles to go. Hitchcliffe is still in front. Ray Hall behind him. Edging just in front of Kanan. Here's Pagano. Those four on the lead lap racing for the win. Ray Hall down to the bottom. Ray Hall to the front around. Grand Ray Hall is taking the lead on the final lap. Can Hitchcliffe battle back? Kanan still in the mix. Ray Hall and Hinchcliffe to the line. Grand oh. Ray Hall has won at Texas Motor Speedway on the last lap pass of James Hinchcliffe. They'll come down for the white flag this time. Look at Matos up on top in the two car. And Briscoe's using the last push. It's out. It's He's over. Done. They come down for the white flag. One more tour of the one and a half miles at Chicagoland Speedway. And Briscoe leads by a foot or so. But now what Briscoe wants to do, he wants to maintain that position on the high side and hopefully get a run off of four. And he's getting help from Marias. Mario Marias comes back. Jimmy Vassar said the car wasn't as fast, but now it's fast. He's helping him, and he's got momentum. Not enough to get up on that high Meanwhile, side. Meanwhile, they're four wide behind. Here comes the win, and who is it going to be? That. Briscoe. Briscoe has the advantage, and he gets the win. Oh, man. White flag will come out next time by... Outside, still on your outside. Teammates on your outside. That reminder, outside, teammate. Still outside. Not just another car, teammate on your outside. Very important right now. Get out the look, it's still outside. Yo, get ahead of me, it's on your right rear, still outside, still outside. Still undecided. Buddy came off of two a little bit better. Now outside, they thunder outside. into turn three. Final two corners in this run here, and it's outside. still a question mark. Outside. Vitor Mira outside. drops back just a bit. Now he pulls up alongside and at the line. Mira. No, right. At first, the computer gave us Mira, and then it gave us Rice. Whoa. Dixon coming out of four. Looks like he's going to be in the lead for the white flag lap. Here he was one year ago in the very same position, but he did not have enough ethanol. One half cup short. He doesn't have to worry this time. Down the back stretch. Scott Dixon looking to set a record, but more importantly, looking to win the championship. And here he comes out of turn number four.
Dixon with Elio and Briscoe. Who's going to win the race? The race goes to Cash to Dixon. He gets him right at the stripe. All right, take a look. You're looking for one one thousandth of a second. Oh. Well, we just we've just found out that Elio Castaneda's you are the winner of the race. <laughs> I thought, like, I really think I won this thing, and, uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, we can only listen to one radio at a time. You wonder what everybody else is saying. Well, we've listened to Carter, and they pass under the white flag. Just about a foot that time. Paul, there's not a spectator in these stands today that is sitting down right now. Two by two, the front four. The field all tightly bunched together. Heading into turn three. Oh, Look on the side. final lap. Now Buddy Lazier comes up to take a look to the inside. And Unser Jr. and Hornets go to the line side by side. Unofficially, it's Hornets who takes the win. Oh boy, it was amazingly close.